This week on SR Lounge, we're going to discuss the difference between radio and infrared flash triggering. What's everyone? This is SR Lounge and my name is Pi. Welcome to Ask SR Lounge where we do our best to answer your photography related questions in simple and practical terms. Now this week we got a question from Sarah who asked, if my flash already has built-in wireless controls, then why do I need to get a wireless trigger like a pocket wizard? Well, Sarah, this is a great question, and when it comes to controlling your flash wirelessly, there are two ways to do it. One is by infrared, and one is by radio. Now, each of these technologies, though, have their strengths and weaknesses, so let's chat for a moment about it. Now, the laws regulating radio and audio transmission are different around the world, and because infrared technology doesn't use radio frequencies, it's generally a cheaper and simpler solution to implement. Now, this is why until recently, most advanced flashes such as the Nikon SB900 or the 580EX2 that you see here, only offered infrared wireless control built in rather than radio. Now the built-in infrared technology allows another plus, which is the communication of TTL or manual control information between the master and the slave flash units. Now this is a huge advantage because with these built-in systems, you can basically adjust all of your remote flashes right from your camera. But the main downside of infrared wireless is that it needs direct line of sight. So if there's anything cutting off that line of sight, if the master flash can't see the slave flashes, then the system doesn't work. Also, the range is much more limited, and in general, it's going to be kind of unreliable, especially when you're shooting in, say, bright sun or bright daylight type conditions. Now, on the flip side, while radio systems are generally more expensive, a radio flash trigger can communicate effectively across hundreds or even thousands of feet, and they don't require line of sight. But until recently, if we wanted a radio trigger system, we're stuck basically buying third-party solutions, such as this Pocket Wizard or, say, a Radio Popper or a Young Noah. But now these systems are actually being built into advanced flash units, such as the Canon 600EX RT. It's not cheap, but it's a solution that is available. So Sarah, to answer your question, the built-in wireless infrared technology is great when starting to get your feet wet when it comes to using off-camera flash in close range and indoor studio-like situations. Basically, if you have two or more name brand flashes that are compatible, Nikon calls their system CLS, for example, then you can start experimenting right away with multiple flash setups without any additional hardware and while being able to control your off-camera slave flashes via the on-camera master flash. However, when it comes to getting consistent and reliable off-camera triggering outdoors across broad distances or when you don't have direct line of sight, then you're really gonna need to turn to a radio trigger solution. Now, it's important to mention that not all radio solutions are the same. For example, some don't offer any control of the off-camera flash units themselves, such as this Pocket Wizard Plus 3, while others offer a hybrid infrared and radio system that allow you to control your remote flashes via radio signals such as the radio popper. Thank you, Sarah, for your submission. And remember, if you all have a question, be sure to submit it to ask at srlounge.com. Thanks, everybody, for watching. My name is Pi, and I'll see you all in the next video.